to natural law, the way things are supposed to be. And we are out of sync with everything. We're not in tune with nothing because we're following time, But time is death. And as long as we follow it, you will die. It's just that simple. Then you have to put on to the simple fact that now they have something that can basically induce the effect of time as we know it. So you take the idea of a time, of something withering away over time, and you put it into physical effect, which is basically what they have, what they have done with this moon. In the movie Time Machine, they show the part where the moon is destroyed. And it's not a coincidence that the moon being destroyed is in a movie about time. So if you remember later, you know, when he goes like 800,000 years into the future, you have after the moon is destroyed, they're basically giving you people living back primitively, like with nature. You know, they had a little bit of technology there, giving you that duality I was talking about before. We usually see, uh, I was talking about with Star Wars, you have a little bit of nature, you have a little bit of technology. It's a balance. It's the way things are supposed to be. But the people was basically living, you know, uh, with nature the way they're supposed to be. The moon was gone. It wasn't that control. Even with Star Wars, when you understand what it's trying to tell you with Darth Vader representing Saturn, wearing the robe, everything that is Darth Vader has to do with Saturn. And then you have the moon, which is Iopetus, basically wreaking havoc on planets. The moon, the Death Star, Death, Saturn, you know, Grim Reaper, what have you, Death Star, wreaking havoc on planets, destroying planets. It's giving you that Saturn control of a moon controlling planets. So the metaphors is there. It's so much out there pointing at it. It's not out of left field that people is making this connection between Saturn and our moon and reality and time itself. A lot of people has, think it has to do with um, the moon broadcasting a certain reality that when you go deeper into it, which we'll touch on this down the line with the whole reptilian thing I talked about before, how we are a creation. So you have a lot of people looking at it as if we were created simply to perceive this reality of materialism. So when you think about it, it kind of goes back into the whole wave function and the whole thing about consciousness collapsing the wave function. So when you are conscious, remember I talked about the the whole double slit experiment when the people was conscious during the experiment they seen the actual photons the particles go through the slits and hit the back of the wall in particle form solid form but when it wasn't conscious of the experiment that the lights so or photons pass through the slits in waves the way it's supposed to be without consciousness so it's giving you the hint that or the possible reality that consciousness when it's being perceived as in our conscious state on this planet is somehow being forced to perceive a certain reality which vis-a-vis -vis would be the protons solid form but the unconscious the true state would be the wave so they believe we are we have been manipulated to have uh basically be perceiving this physical reality same thing with sleep when you are sleeping, when you are in the dream, when you become fully conscious that you are sleeping, you immediately wake up. The dream function is collapsed by your consciousness and it's by design. So it's a lot to get into when you really start thinking about this stuff deeply. I don't want nobody to really think any of that stuff is spooky talk when they're talking about Saturn and everything like that. I mean, it's a thing we really can't ignore because we see it everywhere throughout the ancient world. And uh, we see all the worship of Saturn and the fact that, you know, they could see it. Can't ignore it. It's something that we have to go with. But when you look at all these things and, you know, you have the movie Oblivion, the moon is destroyed. I always talk about all the movies that the moon is destroyed for a reason. It's giving us a hint, a clue to something about, you know, the moon affecting us. The whole thing with the moon and the menstrual cycle of a woman, as Maria Gambudis talks about in her books, you know, when that came along, it was change. Human, mankind was changed. Something changed things. So we have this whole time construct now in a physical sense, as well as in just this control sense. And a lot of people believe that it's the moon that is affecting this actual time. But our consciousness can overcome it. So we go back to ancient Kemet. As we always do. And you look at the fact that you have pyramids all over the world producing negative ions. 
which as I said, and as science to tell you, with an abundance of negative ions in the atmosphere, it will kill every single virus, all bad bacteria, everything that is causing us to age, giving us the ability to not only meditate better, but to live longer. Plain and simple. So when you understand that fact, you have pyramids everywhere. This is what they was producing. Now they are gone, and now we are subject to time. I want to challenge you, and I've been to Egypt many times, to go to Egypt or go online, find me a hieroglyph of an old ancient Egyptian. You can't find it. You can't find it. Two things I look for. Picture of an old ancient Egyptian and a fat ancient Egyptian. Those are two things you will not find. And you got to think about that and what was going on around that time and what they were able to do. Now, we're not saying that they was immortal. They obviously could be killed. There was obviously different rulers that took the throne throughout the dynasties. A lot of them were killed or died in war. It's not too many of them we can find that died of natural causes when you read. So that's something to think about as well. This is ancient. This information is ancient. These people we're talking about going all the way back to the conquest of ancient Kemet. It's the same people today. The same powers that be. There is no way no regular normal person will follow a plan for so long, you know, and, and, and not be there. Why would you dedicate your entire life to a plan you would never see come to fruition unless you know you're going to be around to see it come true? Something to think about. Also, when you look at the Book of the Dead, Ani's Book of the Dead, or even Hunefra's Book of the Dead, they are not old. When you look at the whole depiction of any of the books of the dead, you look at the person that's going through judgment, they are not old. They are not, you know, weathered away and old. It's something you have to pay attention to when we're talking about the effects of time. Did it affect them differently? How was they able to sustain those forms and not be super feeble during the end? What was really going on? It's a big secret, something that they're hiding, a lot they're hiding about ancient Kemet. It's one of the reasons why I always study it and I keep going back because there's so much there to see. That is one of the mysteries because you just don't see it. But, you know, as I said, we can't look at it and just, you know, shoot it. We got to really think about that. Book of the Dead, when you're going through, on these Book of the Dead, who never is or whoever's, you know, you don't see old age. You just don't see it in any of the reliefs from ancient Kemet. So, you know, we look at that. We look at the whole aspect of the biblical part of Saturn, Satan, you know, and how that deals with death and everything like that. So when we know we're touching on Satan. We got to go into the Bible and see what the Bible says about time. And of course, you have Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. That's basically giving you a whole bunch about time. And we also have Psalms 90, 12. It says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And there are many Bible verses that's giving you the uh, the opinion. It's giving you basically the teaching of time being a must, a good thing. Time, you must take it in. Time is this. Of course, it's going to promote time because time is Satan. Time is something that they want us to be subject to. And we got to look at it as it's God's time. You hear people say, that, oh, we on God's time. It's God's time. Time. Of course, it's God's time. Satan controls this world. Time controls this world, controls us. So you, you put all that stuff together. But what I want you to get out of it and understand, you have that very whole thing of time as we are perceiving it, which is non-existent. And you have the effect of what we think of as time, but it is being pushed into our consciousness so that we perceive it a certain way and we manifest that onto ourself because that's exactly what we're doing. So let's go a little bit deeper into this whole thing, the whole, you know, physics or quantum physics of it, you know, to get into it. It's deep. So when you think about this world, physical, this solar system that we in, all this physical stuff that we can see and perceive with human eyes and with the technology that we're able to use now 
to also, you know, see with human eyes. Because no matter what we create, we're still going to look through it or use that technology with human eyes. So it's still only but so much we can perceive, even with technology. It's just going to be some things that you can't see with human eyes combined with machinery, if you understand what I'm trying to say. So let's just understand one. You have atoms. Everything is atoms. And I talked about how atoms are slowed down when, you know, we should be able to hand pass through our hand, hand pass through all this physical stuff, but it don't because of the slow vibration that's going on. What's causing that? So when you understand, maybe, this is just theory, that if we go outside of this universe or outside of this you know, solar system and go further, that we would get to a point of energy. And it's what they call dark matter. Remember, we are only a small slither of the entire universe and we can only perceive that slither. When you get into dark matter, we don't, it's, we don't know what it is. We have no clue. So if we take that as it being, because darkness is light, is it being energy? You know, the way things are supposed to be. The true form of things. And this slither was created for exactly what it is, what we perceive in this physical universe. So, in that context, you take time. And time being what is possibly slowing this vibration, this frequency down to a point where we can perceive it. So, our consciousness has been somehow tricked and forced to basically survive in this materialistic universe. And we are in these bodies surviving. It's a symbiotic relationship that our energy has with the body and in order for it to exist, the body has to be right. We, it has to rely on the physical. So this perception that we're seeing of this physical world our subconscious, our consciousness is being tricked to perceive it and to have to deal with it, plain and simple. So now the whole trick is for us consciously to understand what's going on and to basically wake up from it to, you know, as we say, you know, Kundalini rising and open a third eye and to become aware of everything so that we can escape the cycle of reincarnation into the physical and we can leave and go forward to, you know, the real universe, what's really going on. So basically what I'm saying is think about it. If consciousness creates energy, energy creates atoms, atoms creates the elements. These elements come together to make up physical matter, us, the whole nine. If consciousness is the start of it, and we are consciousness, our energy is consciousness, we are consciousness as well. What is stopping us from simply controlling the material? since our consciousness once created it. And again, we know we don't have that connection. We don't have the knowledge to do so. So that's basically what it is. It's we're being tricked to perceive this material. And since our consciousness has been given a perception of time, because we all, we grow up, we learn about time. We learn about things happening over time. Our brain is bombarded with the succession the rise and fall of things, people growing old, people dying, things dying, that is all programmed into us. And then we then program it onto our physical self to understand that as each day pass, we age. We start seeing it on TV, we start perceiving it, we start taking it in, we start seeing our friends get old, we start seeing our actors and what have you get old and die. And that perception we take in and manifest it onto our physical self. And that's time, plain and simple. So when I was talking about going back with the ancient Egyptians, this perception wasn't there. Now, it's a simple way to almost sort of prove this. As I said, I would try to do. <laughs> we have to look at autism. And you know, I have a, my best friend, his son is autistic. He is aging so slow, slowly. And it's amazing to me. It's just like, wow. How old he is versus how he looks like a little boy still and we go back and we look at the fact that one that's how it used to be go back to the 80s and 90s these movies wasn't out that's out now this kind of content that's out wasn't out now it started to really come late 90s and we see how what we took in mentally changed us physically 